the magician Reyes, the number one ranked player on the Pro Billiards Tour. Tonight, these two competitors buy for a first place prize of $15,000 in the World 8-Ball Championship. Prime presents the Professional Billiards Tour World 8-Ball Championship from the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Brought to you by Peucci Originals, custom choice of more top players than any other queue. And AMF Playmaster, bringing quality to the table. Hello and welcome to the Riviera Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the 1995 World 8-Ball Championship. I'm Tom Kelly with Jim Mattia and Jim Rempe, two former world champions themselves. They're here, obviously, to provide the expertise in our telecast. Well, we've got two great semifinalists battling out for the championship. Carter goes against Reyes. Carter had a bit of an easier time getting to the finals, Jim. Well, I talked to Carter uh, earlier before this match. He's been playing great all week. He's got a good attitude. He's got a good style. He's playing well. I like him in this match tonight. I know the experts say it's all Efren. Tonight, I disagree. Well, Carter is undefeated, as you said. Uh, Jim Rempe, uh, Efren's been here before. He's on a hot streak. He might be one of the best in the world at this game. He's won two out of the last three, but he hasn't really had that much luck at this in recent years. Huh? Well, the last two tournaments at the Riviera Hotel was nine ball, and he lost both of those the last two years to Johnny Archer and Earl Strickland. But he is on the top of his game. Like you said, he won the last two tournaments, and he's playing very well, and he is one of the greatest players of all times. And I think he has something to prove here. I think he wants to win the world championships. Carter might be in a spot of being uh, in the limelight, the cameras playing for something he's never played for before. A lot of pressure, do you think, Jim? Well, I think a lot of that pressure was erased earlier with his victory over Johnny Archer. Johnny Archer is a two-time world champion. Jeff Carter proved that he can beat the best in the game. Regardless of what happens tonight, both of these guys, el magnifico. Well, it started out with 66 of the world's best, and now they're down to two, and we'll find out which one is the best for 1995. Carter and Reyes, Jim and Jim and I, will be back to get it started. We'll have the rules, and we'll lag, and then we'll have the break. Right after we pause for this message. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Time to meet the two contestants for the 1995 World 8-Ball Championship. First of all, from the Philippines, Manila, perhaps one of the finest pool players in the world, a man who's ranked number one in this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice warm round of applause for Efren Reyes, accompanied by Gracie and Amy from the Riviera Hit Show Lakai. Efren Reyes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the other contestant for World 8-Ball Championship honors is a man who's undefeated in the tournament so far, has battled his way into the finals. His hometown, Beloit, Wisconsin, living in Chicago. A nice warm reception, if you will, for Jeff Carter. <laughs> Jeff Carter is accompanied into the um, room by Heidi and Michelle, two of the beautiful showgirls from Riviera's hit show, Crazy Girls. Jeff Carter, Heidi and Michelle. Now let's check the uh, rules that govern this uh, contest as they battle for the 1995 World 8 Ball Championship. Pro Express rules, race to eight, first man to get eight games or frames wins it. 45 seconds to get your shot off. The winner goes on to break. You want to come out this way? Two different balls may be used on the break, and the breaker has the choice. No push-outs, and eight ball is not neutral. Eight ball on the break automatically wins that frame. You must call the pocket to win, and pocketing the eight ball, foul on all balls. The ball in hand goes to the other shooter. The referee has the final decision, of course. Three successive fouls means you've lost the game, and one timeout per rack for each player. All right, and now the two uh, finalists at the uh, table for the lag to see who gets the opportunity for the first break. That's Reyes on the left of your screen and Carter on the right. 
And Carter walks away as if to say Reyes is going to break first, but is he? I don't know. That's awfully close. And Scott Smith the is going to have to. The lag is Mr. Carter. It's going to be Carter. He will start. Well, gents, if the match is as even as that lag, we're in for a, a busy eight games. A aren't good we? night, huh? They're ready to rack and roll. <laughs> All right, here's Carter, young man out of Beloit, lives in Chicago, undefeated. 66 of the world's best players started this tournament, and he's one of two now, and he has not lost a match. He said he's broke 48 times without scratching in this we, tournament. We saw him in the semis, and he made the eight ball twice. Unprecedented. Going to get... Nothing. Oh, I thought he had a striper headed for the side pocket. Well, the table's wide open. Yep. He has choice. He's got... A problem ball with the five and nine. That's the only problem on the table. And he'll look to break that cluster open first. When he made the eight ball on two breaks in the semifinal win over Archer, why, uh, it kind of made it an easy one, eight to four. He's going for the strike. See right here, he needs to break these balls out as soon as he can. He tried to do it right there, but uh, no success. He could possibly do it right here, Jimmy, if he uh, cuts the 14 down in the corner pocket, bring a cue ball across, and perhaps hit him. But then again, he could be forced to uh, not have a shot after that. Well, yeah, that's the problem, Jim. Uh, see, if he breaks the cluster up with, with that particular ball, there's no ball around her to have a key shot to get after you break the cluster up. He'd like to leave the 14 there and break the cluster up with another ball. Carter takes a so, time out for this game. 45 seconds, he's taking a time out. Each player is allowed one time out per game to contemplate strategy and uh, obviously they are not just playing this shot but they're two or three ahead. The prize money breakdown, first prize is worth $15,000, second $7,500. So the worst either one of these two men will get tonight is $7,500. Third and fourth places, $5,200 each, $3,700, fifth and sixth, and then $2,900, the balance of the prize money. Well, made that easily. Nice position. <laughs> the Actually, nine ball is going to be a problem up there in the yeah. corner with the five, huh? Well, the right way to break this shot up would be off the 12 ball on the cushion there because if you come across the table, no matter where you hit them balls, you're still going to have a shot on the 14 ball. I think he's going to play position on the 12 ball here. Try to get in the middle of the table. Well, a little bit too hard. He can't make the 12 from there, but he's got the 14. <laughs> See, he would have liked to have stopped right about here so he could have broke the balls coming off the cushion this way. No matter what happened with the cue ball, he still would have had a shot on a 14 ball. That didn't work, so he got bad position here, so he's going to have to shoot the 14 ball, let the cue ball come down this way some way, whether he comes back straight up here and then tries to break it up off that ball. We don't know what he's going to do, but that looks like the only possible way. You know, Jeff Carter, he started playing pool when he was 14. He's looking at the bank shot. His parents gave him a fiberglass cue ordered out of a catalog for Christmas, Tom. <laughs> and who would ever think that tonight he's playing for the championship of the world. And that fiberglass uh, stick has suddenly become an ecological marvel now. It is, when he tells you about it, it's uh, as pure as the driven snow. Well, he had to get that nine ball at least out where he'd have a chance at it later, didn't he? Yeah. He had he to do something. He went for the bank on there, and, uh, well, he missed it. Now we see Efren Reyes, considered among the best in the world. Eight, seven, semifinal win over Mark Jarvis. And what a thrilling semifinal encounter that was. He's walked into a nice table here for his opening shot. The balls are all loosened up. He's probably going to play for the five ball. His next shot up in the corner. Yep, roll the cue ball down, straight in on the five in the corner. And as great as player as, as uh, Efren Reyes is, you'd have to consider him very fortunate, right, Jimmy, to be playing in the finals tonight because that match belonged to Mark Jarvis a number of times. Yeah. Well, that's for sure. I mean, he really didn't play up to his standard. I mean, uh, he missed two balls or something like that during the match. and. Uh, that's a rarity when you watch him play. And yet, uh, you know, just for a bit of luck, why Jarvis would be playing here tonight? What he didn't have. 
He made some great shots, though. Yes, I'll tell did. you what, he went out swinging. Yes, he did. Yeah, all guns blazing. And what a great attitude he had after the semifinal competition, even in defeat. Nice soft stroke here. He's just going to draw the cue ball straight back. Playing the seven ball down the bottom pocket. Oop, he didn't draw it as far as he would have liked to. Where does he put the four? Cut it down the corner, does he? Well, that's the seven. He's going to. Excuse me, seven. He's going to cut it down the corner pocket and just run into the, the twelve ball that's on the cushion or the ten ball, like that. Mm -hmm. Watch it. Well done. Now the eight ball in the corner to uh, win the first game. And that's that. Unless he stretches. Nope. 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 All right. So Reyes taking advantage of an opportunity. As Carter was unable to do much with the nine ball, missing on an attempted bank shot, and uh, ending up cutting this eight ball into the corner and takes a 1 0 lead after game one. First man to eight will win it. I've noticed there's, both of them are having trouble with the speed of the table. They really haven't gotten in line on their position. And, uh, and that's what caused the Carter to get out of, out of position and uh, have to go for the bank shot. Reyes now to break game two. He has a one nothing game lead. Carter intently looking over his shoulder as he breaks. He hit them solid. He hit the front ball, trying to pocket a ball rather than the eight ball. And I think he made a stripe ball. Yep. Something he didn't do a lot of in his semifinal win over Jarvis, 8-7. He didn't make many balls on the break. Carter, on the other hand, made the eight ball twice in his semifinal win on the break. No better way to win. Nope. You know, he shot that ball left-handed? Well, Why would he shoot that ball left-handed? Oh, because of the because balls. because he's able to. Huh? No, no, because <laughs> of the balls, it's fall on all balls, and uh, he didn't want to touch the nine or the one. Isn't it nice to have that kind of talent, huh? She Interesting guy, Reyes. Story has it he came from the native, uh, his native Philippines, as Carlos Morales. Excuse me, Caesar. Caesar. Caesar Morales. Caesar Morales. Why he changed his name, I don't know. Maybe there's a uh, a passport story in there, and after he came over and just destroyed most of the good American players, was winning everything, and finally. Somebody said there is no such guy. Hmm? I was there. I you were one of the it. guys? Uh, no, I didn't play in the tournament, oh. but I was there and I saw it. And uh, he did away with all of America's best. Well, he's out here, I think. He's got perfect angle on a 13 ball. He's going to come to the cushion here, right out for the nine ball here. And the eight ball sitting right in the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. So it would appear that he's um, on his way to a 2 0 lead. He's drawn. He's going straight into the nine ball. Left himself an angle on the nine to go two cushions for the eight ball in the side pocket. And shoot this ball like this, come two cushions back out there. No, wrong again. Well, he still has got the other pocket on the other side. He calls it for the side pocket across the table. Oops. So he knocks it in, winning game number two. First man to get to eight wins it, and Reyes has a two-zip lead over Carter. So leading two to nothing, Reyes with the break again. Carter's only hope that uh, Reyes doesn't get anything off the break and he gets a chance to play. I don't think he made a ball, did he? Nope. Well, it may not be much, but it is Carter's opportunity. How does the table shape up, gentlemen? Well, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, he's got a, a tough shot to start with. I think he can cut the 12 ball over in the bottom left-hand corner. Plays the stripes, does he? Yes. He's only got one shot here. I mean, he's going to make this ball over in this corner pocket. I don't see no other kind of shot unless he wants to shoot something long up to here. But most guys like to start out with the easiest shot and then get themselves in position. 
Carter is a very accomplished player, but he's in against a guy that most people consider to be the best in the tournament. And I would think psychologically, uh, to me, that uh, he, he knows he can't make a mistake if this guy's going to take the game away from him. Well, he mentioned earlier, he said, you know, the main thing is I just hope I play well. I've been playing well all week, and I'm not going to feel bad if I lose as long as I play a good match. Mm -hmm. And that's a good attitude. And he cut that ball in nicely. How about position, Jim Randy? Well, he's got a, a difficult shot on the nine ball. He has to cut it back in the corner pocket. Uh, he can cut this ball here into this corner pocket. It looks like his only shot. I don't think he'd want to knock the ten ball on the side. It looks too tough. Now his he, folks used he's to going give him, for the ten, isn't he? He's going for the ten. Yeah. He might be banking this ball. His folks used to give him money to go get time haircuts and game. groceries and clothes and this and that. Jeff spent it all in the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how long he's been wearing that pair of pants or how long he's had that haircut there, but all his cash went in the pool room. <laughs> Is he the original results of a misspent youth? Is that the guy <laughs> they coined that phrase about? I thought it was me. Well, here he is in the World Championships. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No. He's banking this ball, I think. Oh. Hit. Rim rattler. Oh, what a tough break. What a tough break. Hit too hard, was it? No, he just missed it. Bank shots are different on all tables. You know, any pool room or any bar table or anything, all balls bank differently. You got to get used to the table to understand the, the banks and have a feel of it. So here's Reyes back at work now, leading two games to none. Going for the solids. He's going to try to break that six and two up on the cushion. He might do it right now. He can cut the five in the side pocket, let the cue ball come right down here and break these two balls up right on this shot. Well, he put the seven ball right out in the open a moment ago with a very nice uh, move by the cue ball. There you are. And out for the two ball. That was an excellent shot. Got a nice bounce off the rail, too, didn't he? What a nice soft touch. Seems to do everything just good enough to win. The magician. Yeah. Know how wavy his stroke is. See how wavy his stroke is? Has a completely different style than the Americans. <laughs> but uh, one can't argue with it, Tom. He gets the job done. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And yet he has been beaten. And he's had some disappointing moments in top tournaments, but he's on a roll. He's won two out of the last three he's been in. This got away from him. That is not the best position, is it? Not at all. No. Well, the only thing he can do here, I mean, he, he's got a shot on the three ball, but it's tough to get position on the one ball. He can shoot the three ball here, but he's going to let the cue ball run down this way some way, it looks to me, and come back up this way like that. A lot of green. Yeah, he's drawing the cue ball. He's hitting the cue ball low. Doesn't bother. Oh, look at this shot. How about that? Between the balls and out for the one ball. Great shot. Mm -hmm. And the crowd, knowledgeable, of course. They're all outstanding pool players, billiard players. Looking on, appreciate the talent of this man, Efren Reyes. He continues to roll along. What makes him such a difficult player to, to beat is he's also a world-class three-cushion billiard player. And that really comes in handy in a game of pocket billiards. Eight ball in the corner to win it. And just that easily, he has taken a big 3-0 advantage over Jeff Carter in the race to eight to win this 1995 World Eight Ball Championship. Watch again as he puts the eight ball in the corner and takes a 3-0 lead. Reyes wins As you watch three, it once again, how easy Reyes makes it. Reyes three, Carter zero. This is a big game right here. I mean, Jeff's starting to feel this slip away. Yes. He needs to win this, win this game. Well, he got a break when Reyes didn't make anything on the last break, and he needs such a break again and a chance to get at the table. Oops, there goes a solid. The last ball roll. Yeah. Jeff thinks it's his shot. Oops. 
he wishes it was his shot. <laughs> that too. <laughs> right now, my prediction not looking too well. I predicted Carter would uh, be double tough tonight and beat Ephraim Reyes. He's uh, trailing three nothing, Tom. Well, we got a long way to go, though. It's not yes. over with yet. No. Things have drastically turned around from time to time in this game. The two champions sitting with me know that full well. But I tell you, Reyes is just uh, not making any mistakes. These two balls down here or the trouble balls this rack because there's no key ball to get down to them. By winning the first three games, that takes a tremendous amount of pressure off of Efren, uh, Tom. It's always nice to jump out into the lead. Yeah. Now, uh, Carter, on the other hand, he'll be, you know, begins to wonder when he will win a game and take that edge off himself. If he falls behind four nothing, five nothing, he's in serious trouble. He's coming down for the two balls right now. Cue ball got away from him. Mm. Bad shot. No kind of shot right now. Well, everybody likes every, somebody likes every shot in this game. In this case, I guess uh, Carter's sitting over there thinking, get ready and do something when you get this chance. He's gonna play a little safety here. Good shot. Uh -huh. That's a good shot. Unless he can see this ball here. Well, Carter's got to make some shots and get some confidence back here and get himself back into looks, this game. Looks like he's playing the 11 ball in the side pocket. Small hole there, isn't there? Hmm. Is there one there? Boy. Perfect. My goodness. Perfect. Well, he um, had his nerves under control with that one, didn't he? Huh? Really? I, I didn't think he had much room. He had about a half a pocket there. Yeah. Well, like I said before, I like the way Jeffrey takes these balls off the tables. I mean, he's got good knowledge about the game. He's a guy that keeps himself very well conditioned. You know, he eats the right food, he gets the right sleep, he practices hard every day, he takes the game very, very seriously. Desperately needs to win this game. He's trailing 3-0. He's going to break out the eight ball in the shot here. Put it into a position where he can get at it later on. Whoops. See, he's looking right now. When he shoots the 10 ball in the corner pocket, he's looking where he's going to hit the 8. Mm -hmm. You know, to make sure, like, he glances maybe off here and then bumps the 6 and then have a shot in the 15 ball. I guess he wants it right in the middle of the table, doesn't he? Right, right around where the 8 and the 6 are right now. Uh-huh. See, so nice and soft. All right. Now he's got the ball in the corner down here. Well, it looks like he's straight and in. What? He's straight in. Straight he'll, in. He'll probably draw the cue ball back to the cushion where, it, where it's at there. In other words, shoot the 13 in here, draw the cue ball back here for the 15 in the side pocket. I think he's going to follow this and then play the 15 in the side. But he is following it. Yeah, he's at the cue ball high. Mm-hmm. Just as my experts predicted. Will he put it in the side pocket or take it up into the end? And that's that's uh, Good questionable question. right now. It's all about which which uh, pocket he feels more comfortable with right now. It's uh, not an easy shot in the corner. It's not an easy shot in the side. If he shoots it in the corner, he, he disturbs the six ball. He just wants to slow pinch this ball with a low stroke, hit the cue ball very low and hit it soft. Does he have a chance to scratch on this too in the side? No, I don't think no? so. All right. Was taking so he, it he, the rolled it. Yeah. he rolled it. He rolled it. Oh. Mm. No miss there. Well. I think if he shot that shot with low English, like low left-hand English, Jim, to spin that ball in and keep the cue ball right around there, I think he would have been better off than rolling it. When you roll a ball like that, you take your life in your hands, they say. You don't know what's going to happen. So Reyes now looking to make it a 4-0 advantage. What will he do with this one? He didn't. He's, <laughs> he's come up very short on this shot. Now he has a bit of a problem. 
Here's what he does extremely well, though. I mean, he can hit this ball with low right, like really spin this ball in, kill the ball. That's what he's doing, I think. Killing the ball. He well, does that better than anybody. He is. He's good. Perfect position. And the eight ball down in the corner. And that'll make it 4-0 for Reyes. Just like that. So Carter's had some opportunities. He's come up a little bit short. The last chance was probably the best he's had. But Reyes, uh, not a man that you give an opportunity to. Give him an opening and he'll take that $56,000 table and run right through it. Watch him cut that five ball back. And that's what a beautiful shot that is. That slow spin, I mean, you have to stroke the ball extremely well and, and, and really follow through, hitting it low to the right. And that's just, you spin the ball in, yet you kill the cue ball where it doesn't have much speed on it. Reyes, 4 nothing over Carter. Scott Smith uh, does a nice job racking him up, doesn't he? Hmm? He's the best referee we've ever had. Reyes has got at least one in the side pocket. I didn't see what it was. I believe he's got the solids. Now, in that last game where he pocketed that five ball, which turned out to be the game winning shot, Tom, that's the difference, I think, with the style of the Philippine players compared to the American players. I think the American players would have rifled the five in with a lot more speed and took the chances with where the cue ball lays. But Efren has that delicate stroke, and he does it all so well. Certainly. Difficult, difficult shot yeah, that was. Couldn't argue with that. I mean, skill of a surgeon and laid the cue ball just dead in line with the eight ball and made it a relatively easy shot to the corner. Four nothing. Well, gentlemen, um, he's going to have to make a mistake and Carter's going to have to get up off the electric chair over there. And He's playing the combination here. Yeah. He's not going to get up and go anywhere until Efren misses. Unless maybe he throws a tomato at Efren or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. <laughs> the Philippine players as a group, I would say the best players in the world today. They invaded the United States 10 years ago, Tom. And it's not just the great Efren Reyes. They have many, many great players. I've yet to see a weak player come from the Philippines. One begins to wonder how many champions do they have over there? <laughs> no matter what name they come over here under. Huh? Oh, wow. <coughs> mm. Well, a break for Carter. <laughs> and Reyes is the first one to admit that he didn't make a very good shot. He must clear this table, otherwise we could be looking at a blowout tonight. Well, this is a nice opportunity to step into. I mean, the balls are really wide open this time. Well, let's watch Carter and hope that he can get off this uh, schneid. He's trailing four games to none. First man to get to eight wins it. And that would be the 1995 World Eight Ball Championship. We're here at the Riviera Hotel and Casino. Jim Mattia, Jim Rempe, both world champions. And yours truly, Tom Kelly. There's so many ways for him to clear these balls off the table right now. Eleven ball next, do you think? Yeah, I think he's going to just shoot this ball, the 12 ball, and draw the cue ball back oh, up for the 14, yes. get rid of the 14 next. Mm -hmm. You always want to get the balls on the rail off the table as quick as you can. Those can be a problem, not because only the difficulty of making them but trying to control your cue ball it's very difficult when you're shooting balls down the rail mm -hmm. so always just clear the, the balls off the rail so he's so going with possible. 14 up in the other corner up there is that exactly right? yeah thirteen will be next all right <coughs> and then he's got the other two set up right down there as well doesn't he yeah everything's in play right now and the eight ball dead in the middle and near the side pocket there. Carter trying to get right up off the floor and get back into this match. Not easy. Reyes gave him an opportunity. That's nice. That's nice. There's a 
look around the room here, I don't see nothing but champions. We've got Mike LeBron, Kim Davenport, Johnny Archer, Nick Varner. We've even got a blast from the past. <laughs> Bill Staten, Weenie <laughs> Feeney, the man that I uh, <laughs> defeated for the world title back in 1972. He's over there in the front row. <laughs> you must have been just a child prodigy in 72, Mattia. I was a baby. <laughs> well, here he is. All right. Carter gets a nice warm round of applause. A missed attempt on a three ball by Reyes opened the door, and Carter has picked up his first uh, game. He now trails four games to one, but I think more importantly, not, to, not that that is an important step, but he gets the break now, and perhaps he can get something going his way and run the table for a couple. Of Carter wins game five after five. But this does, it is the kind of a game that you never get too old to play, right? Nah, this is one of the greatest games that God ever created, the game of pool. I mean, you get a pool table in your house, and I'll tell you something, you're going to have 60, 70 years of fun on one of these things. All you got to do is put a new cloth on it every once in a while, and that's not very often either. And it's designed for kids, for women, for older people, younger people. It doesn't matter. Anybody can have fun with this game. That's what makes it such a great game. Any size, no strength needed. Just, uh, just enjoy the game. Well, Carter uh, couldn't get a ball to fall. And that's not really bad when you take a look at uh, a couple of the balls that are locked up, the five and the nine. The Going for the solids, uh, Rance. Just, huh? just the five and the nine here. That's the only problem. Well, he had a 310 there that he broke out just now. He must get to the five ball as soon as possible, Tom. Otherwise, uh, well, how can he get it? The nine ball's right on top of it, is it not? He can still get at that? He's got to figure out a way here to pocket the, the ball the and get that cue ball down to that end of the table to break those up. The only ball I see that he can get down table to break the five ball up with is the, is the one ball. See, I think that's what he's going for right now. Play position right in about here with the one ball. No, he's going to need to shoot the two ball first for the four, the four ball. And then he'll put the one ball in the side pocket and let the two yeah, balls come down and, and break up that combination in the corner, right? Yeah, because it's a natural angle coming off the one uh -huh. into the five. Uh -huh. Going to draw this back a little bit to get... That's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to break it up right now. <laughs> well, he could even make it, couldn't he? Well, I don't think he can make the five. You don't think if he no, wouldn't come off that one ball? Then? No. See, he's looking no. at the two ball. He could have a position on the two ball in the side pocket next to him. Almost made the five, but he got that busted up. He got the five in the corner pocket. Yeah. He's laying perfect here. Yeah. yeah. Five in the corner, two in the side. Eight ball right in the middle of the table. Three balls over against the rail. Not quite against the rail. Efren Reyes. Among the best. He's going straight across the table for the three up the corner. Great shot. The two goes back in the corner. The, the two ball passes in this corner pocket for his next shot. This is textbook stuff this guy's showing us today. Yeah, that was a great shot he made there. As far as I'm concerned, this guy ranks up with uh, the greatest players of all time that uh, we've ever had. Guys like Moscone, Luther Lassiter, Joe Balsa, Irving Crane. Ralph Greenleaf, I mean, you go on and on and on. Those are the players from yesterday, not to mention the players from today. This guy is as good as anybody I've ever seen, right, Jimmy? Oh, well, it's unbelievable. Plus, he plays all the games, Jim. Not just straightforward one particular game. He plays them all. Billiards, like Willie Hoppy used to play a lot of billiards and played it great, but Willie Hoppy never played before. Eight ball in the corner, says Reyes, and it is indeed. And he has an advantage now of five games to one. But the only time you know that he's uh, feeling any emotion is when he makes a bad shot. Then he laughs and talks to himself. Other than that, he's just like a guy going about a, a job at the office, isn't he? 5-1. Game five. six is Mr. Reyes. First man to eight wins it. And it is, of course, the 1995 World 8-Ball Championship. Efren Reyes out of the Philippines. And my two resident world champions and experts... Tim Mattia and Tim Rumby both agree this guy's as good as this game has seen. No matter what era you're talking about, he doesn't make many mistakes, and if you make one, you end up paying for it. What an accomplished player. One of his <clears throat> greatest assets, really, 
is his concentration. You know, you, a lot of times when he's not practicing pool, you'll see him playing chess and games like that. He loves games of concentration, and that helps tremendously in a game of pool. Well, when he came in with those two beautiful showgirls, my concentration drifted away tremendously. It certainly didn't affect him <laughs> and his game. I've had a tough time concentrating on anything, but but he's uh, it didn't bother him at all. Now there's Lisa Kay. That is Leonard Bloodworth's daughter. Leonard Bloodworth, one of the premier cue makers from Lakey, Texas, and is our equipment coordinator as well. Five games to one. Reyes has the advantage here. First man to get to eight claims the title. Carter sits and watches as you and I do. Shooting that one left-handed. Uh, they say if this was a fight, they'd stop it. Yeah. It'd be like a mugging, wouldn't it? Yeah. But of course, hope springs eternal for Carter, and uh, anything can happen. As long as Reyes doesn't have eight games so far, why like Carter is still alive, but he's gasping in the corner. Eight ball. He's getting in his groove. Six one now, Reyes. Crowd really appreciating the fine talents of this uh, native of Manila. He can really play. All right, here's Reyes. He leads six games to one at the break. Carter has to hope he doesn't get a ball to go. He's, He's starting to make balls every break now. Yeah. What ball did he make there? He made a strike. Up in the left-hand corner. Well, he's got the 15 down the corner pocket. The 11 ball he's playing. He's getting a rhythm now. Mm. All that green doesn't phase him at all. Of course, I wouldn't, shouldn't imagine that it would as good as he can play. This this rack is over. Ed. This rack is over. He's going to shoot the 14 ball, corner pocket, come back here for the 15 ball next. Shoot the 15 in the side, play for this ball next. And ball down here, what is that, the 10 ball? Is that his um, out ball, you said? But well, he can no? use either one of those balls that are down there. The 10 or the 9, you know? Yeah. He's got the 8 ball down toward that end of the table. The shot after this next one here will be the 9 ball. No, it could be the 10, too. He could play for the 10. He could play for either ball here. Can we talk a moment about the frustration that Carter must be feeling, gentlemen? Well, he, he can't really feel frustrated right now. I mean, that's been the Efren Reyes show from the beginning. Frustration sets in when you have opportunities to win games, such as Mark Jarvis had in the semifinal match and didn't get the job done. Efren Reyes is very fortunate to be playing for the World Championship tonight. It should have been Mark Jarvis. That's when frustration sets in. But when you're sitting on a chair and you're not shooting and the guy's just running max on you, you don't have anything to feel bad about. You just have to sit back and marvel at it all. And wasn't that magnificent to pull? He had that cue ball back in perfect position to put that eight ball in the corner. I mean, he, he just doesn't make a mistake. He's brilliant in his, his attack on this game. He's moving the cue ball. He found the speed is what happened. He's moving the cue ball exactly where he wants it right now. Mr. Reyes wins Carter game eight. sits and looks, and Reyes now is just a game away from Reyes eight. Seven. And the 1995 Carter World Eight Ball Championship. He is three. seven to one. Carter, 66-man field, some of the best players in the world at eight ball. Undefeated, rolled his way right into the semifinals, had a rather easy time in an 8-4 win over Archer. Now he's up against a man that, as Jim Matthias said, was really fortunate to be playing for this title. Not that his skills didn't demand that he be here, but Jarvis could have won it and didn't. Well, here's his chance. Well, a slim one to be sure, but he's still alive, but he's got a lot of, a lot of making up to do, and the crowd trying to urge him on. Cheering him as he comes up, and Carter looking over the table. Carter's not the type of guy to give up. And just because the game is uh, seven to one, not in his favor, he's not gonna give up. He's gonna try to make every ball he can win every game he possibly can. The Looks problem to me like he's is shooting tonight. he needs seven in a row. That's the problem. Yeah. That's a 
also like to thank the people, Jimmy from AMF. Also Miyuchi, I mean, they're one of the biggest supporters of the Pro Tour, and he makes a great cue stick. Well, he's made a stripe ball. He's got it so many different ways to go here. The balls are really open. I mean, he can shoot mm -hmm. this ball this way in this corner pocket, or this way, make this ball. He selected the first shot, playing position on the third, the 11 ball. Remember, you haven't retired too, have you, as a player? No, I won the first tournament of the year this year, the Players' Championships in Philadelphia. God, so, forgive me for not knowing that. I'm how could sorry. you not know that? Congratulations. Belated congratulations to you, Jim. Anyway, he's going to try to get rid of the 10 ball, or not the 10 ball, the 12 ball next. <coughs> tell you, every tournament I've been to lately, just as a spectator, it seems to be lately, uh, Jimmy, it's all the Filipinos, uh, you know, first, second, third, or fourth. They're going to force me to come out of retirement. I can't <laughs> stand it. i got to do something to help my country here. <laughs> <laughs> Patriotic Mattia comes back. Well, they're tough. There's no question about that. And they're gentlemen to play with, too. I tell you, you never hear them moan and groan about how a guy got lucky to beat them or this and that. Like, you hear a lot of that around the bar games. Oh, and, yeah. And this course. and that. Oh, yeah. that lucky stiff. Yeah. You never hear a peep out of these guys. They just get up and do their thing, and if they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. They always shake your hand. They're fun guys to be around with, gentlemen. Well, Carter's got a pretty good chance here to get game number two. He can draw the cue ball up on this one, bump the three, or just stay right there and then cut the 12 in. And straight across the table for the eight in the same pocket, looks like to me. Got there. Mm, yeah. Big ball in the corner. Carter trying to climb back into this. He trails 7-1. 7-2 now. And the crowd gives him a very warm reception for that victory. Maybe Carter can pull it out. He needs a ball here. He's got the eight by the side pocket again, Ooh. though. Not a bad <laughs> fun. Well, he needed to make a ball there. No matter how good or bad the table was going to turn out, he had to have something to put himself up there. Shooting, not watching. No easy shot to start with. Going for the stripes, is he? Looks like a stripe. He's going to play the 12 ball in the corner pocket. You know, Jimmy Efren's playing so well, I think he might want to prolong this match. In other words, if he wins this next game, he doesn't want the title. He wants to play all night, this guy. He's playing so good. They love to the play. Well, he's got your patriotic ire fired up. You may just go down there, grab a stick, and... Hmm? Yeah. Well, he's played yeah. position on the, well, a variety of balls here. I mean, he's <laughs> going to shoot the 14 in the side pocket. He's looking to get the... to the cluster where the 12 ball is. Uh -huh. He has seven games, needs one more to claim the 1995 World 8 Ball Championship. He has played magnificent pool, unbelievably good stuff. Look out. Ooh. Just living on the edge. Yeah. He played position on the 15 ball. I don't know if he'll still shoot it or not. Uh, the 11 ball's hanging. He can make that at any time. Oh. Well, he's human. That's one of the, um, one of the few shots the man has missed has not played well. I don't know if the position of the cue ball was a little disruptive or what. What do you think? Well, I tell you, he wouldn't have had a shot anyway if he'd have made that ball. He broke the ball out that he wanted to get broke out, but he wouldn't have had a shot after that anyhow, so he would have been in trouble anyway. Well, really? Carter's got all these solids all lined up and ready to go. Does he not? No, they're all lined up perfect there. Yeah. Could be a nice big turnaround for him. 
Let me see if I can set this pattern. Six ball in the corner, three ball in the side, come up here for the one ball, up for these two balls, back to the five in the side, and then down the corner for the eight. That's it. Scott, go out and rack them. We got that one figured out. This one's put it in Carter's column. No, he went up table right away. Ooh, is he going to take the one ball now on the side? No? Well, what they do don't think? like the idea of leaving this three ball here. Not in a bad spot, though. I mean, it'd be... That's where he's going, the one ball. Now he's got the two and the four up there. Is that correct, up in the corner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he ought to be able to take uh, both of those. And then the five. Well, it's the four, two, three, and then the five. Okay. Looks to me he'll come underneath the five ball and get position on the three ball. Over to get a little powder. Dory might just shoot the five in the side next. He's trailing seven games to two. He has a lot of making up to do. He can't afford to make a mistake. And this is a big opportunity for him to win the third game, to narrow the gap a bit. Five. Will he shoot the five in the corner or down in the other looks, side? Looks like the side pocket. Side. And the three in the corner down here, Jim? Three in the corner. Just draw the cue ball with low English over to the side cushion for the eight in the top corner. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautifully done by Carter. Now he's got to put the eight ball in the hole down in the corner pocket, top of the table. That's where he's called it. This would get him back into this match a bit, trying to win his third game. Ball by ball, rack by rack. That's how you have to play this game. I guess. I guess. He's done it. So that's game number three, seven to three now. He's still alive. They're pumping oxygen to him, but he's still there to get it. Well, it's not over till the fat lady sings, so uh, Carter is still alive. Well, on the break, he's got to get a ball. It's overstating the obvious, but it happens to be true. It'd be nice to make the eight on the break right here. Wouldn't that be something? He did it twice in the semifinals. He got, got a little movement, movement with it, but he... Uh... Well... Still alive. I think he made a solid, didn't he? I think so. I, I can't see the whole table. Yeah, right here he's going to have a little bit of a problem with opening these balls up. He's got the stripes. Well, he's got the stripes. All right. Which is the best balls to have here in this It really frame. is because this ball passes to this pocket here, and the rest of them are opened up. <coughs> Just making this ball in the corner pockets is a key shot. Will he uh, clean up that whole end of the table if he uh, yes. gets things going his way? Nine ball and the rest of them? You know, if he runs out this rack, he's going to get his momentum all back again, and uh, he can string some racks together. Oh, oh, how do you miss a shot like that? Well, the difficulty of that shot was his cue ball was so close to the rail that he had forced him to, you know, jack up the butt of his stick. And that made the shot a little bit difficult. He should have should have made the shot. But uh, pool is a difficult game, even though these guys make it look easy. I can assure you that it's a very difficult game. Anytime you got a club in your hand, and you're going into another ball and putting it into a pocket, and at the same time putting all kinds of left-hand English, right-hand English, top English, draw English, massing the cue ball, everything. I mean, it's just very difficult. I have no idea what he's going to do right now. Uh, it looks to me like the six does not pass to this corner pocket. I don't There's think no room for the side, side pocket. either, can he? No. I don't know if he can get by the six to make the one ball. I don't think so. He's got a bank shot. He's banking the two ball. Well, he shot. did, and he opened things up for himself now, didn't he? What a great shot. 
The only shot he had, and he hit it with great expertise. He'll break up the cluster here, the 3-7. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just nudged him, just perfect. Got the six ball right down here in the corner. Uh -huh. It's still not an easy rack, though. Nobody's won away from winning the eighth game and the 1995 World Eight Ball Championship. Efren Reyes. I don't think the corporate sponsors from around the world uh, really understand how difficult this game is, Jimmy. Or I think you'd see much, much larger purses in this sport than what we've seen so far. Ooh. That's been a whole come and almost crashed it, but didn't. I tell you, the man doesn't make many mistakes. I mean, when I see money and things like that going into pro beach volleyball, hey, buddy, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> Get a life, will you? I don't know what happened on that shot. He let you, you weren't watching that shot. Well, he doesn't he like it either. I'm still ball. watching the showgirls. Look the at heck the, with that shot. Look at the grin on his face. <laughs> he didn't do what he wanted to do, and that's about the only emotion you see. That's the only time you'll ever yeah, see him smile. Kind of an acknowledgement that you're right. I, well, I goofed he's, it up. He's, he's going to try to bank the four ball. Looks to me he's like he's banking the four ball. Well, he banked the two a while it or no, the he's six, six, six in. the six in the corner. Yeah. Did it get he hit there? It he hit it soft with enough speed. Mm. But look what happened. He tied up the 14 ball. Yep. <laughs> hey, he doesn't give you much. Even if he gives you a break, he doesn't give you much. I was going to say, if the guys around the country looking around see a guy in the neighborhood pool hall who says his name is Cesar Morales, <laughs> don't unbuckle. Yeah, beware. Yeah. <laughs> don't unbuckle. <laughs> Well, what no. kind of a chance has Carter got here, guys? Well, he's got another chance, that's for sure. As long as you get back up to the table, everything's all right. Yeah. I'll tell you something, Tom, if he can win this frame, he can make a match out of this. Sure can. 7-4. Let's see what happened here. He's got to break this ball out. Can he do shot. it when he makes this one on the corner down there? Well, yeah, it, it all depends if he has a little bit of an angle. I can't tell from this position. But if he's got an angle, he can just bump the eight ball. Just let the cue ball float over, a little high force follow, and just bump the eight ball. Well, it's obvious that every shot is extremely important to Carter. Or he and can just, sorry. No, go ahead. Or he can just kiss the 11 ball off the 14. I was going to say, maybe he might try a kiss shot here off the 14. Time but there's no position there. Time out. He's taking another time. Yeah. He's still undecided about that. But that looks to me, Jimmy, like uh, the shot to go for here. I mean, if he can't break him out with the angle he's got. So uh, what good is it to pocket this ball? He's only got one more ball. Well, he's got a couple down table. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I don't know. He has a shot here to play this, kiss it off the 14, and make it in the corner. I think he's going to try that. But he's worried about position in the next ball. Yeah, he's playing the kiss shot. Good shot. But where's the position? Well, he doesn't have it, but he's got that ball, if he can make the next shot, in a position to make it now back in the corner. Right. This is a shot right At here. At least he's got it away from the, uh, the eight ball. He's got a chance to make it. He's got a chance with this shot. Yeah. Four and a half by nine foot table is about 15 by 30. You look at all that green. Faced with an uphill battle, trailing seven, three. That's a shot he must make. Missed it. Oh! Well, what a pressure. You knew it the minute he hit it too, didn't you? you yeah, well, I had him. the right line here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't the, that easy of an out. I mean, he's got the, the six ball. He has to roll the cue ball down. He really can't spin it or do anything with it. He hit it nice and soft. Yeah. Wow. What happened? That's almost too close to do anything, isn't it? What do you do with a shot like that? Got to try to make it in the side pocket. That's about all you can do with a shot. Tom. Eight ball is just sitting there waiting for him, too, if he does. If he can make this ball in the side, the world championship belongs to him. Yeah.
play this game. You better wake up, Sony, McDonald's, all you people. Better wake up. He is something. The world champion. Eight games to three, Efren Reyes. Magnificent performance by a magnificent pool player. And apparently there's no game with that stick and those balls at that table that he can't play. There he is. 1995 World Eight Ball Champion, Efren Reyes. Considered among the best in the world, and he certainly was every bit as good as the great tournament life. Jeff Carter played well, just didn't have enough opportunities, and he caught Reyes on a truly picture-perfect evening. Great crowd on hand, and they are on their feet to a man, woman, and child to salute the new champion. They really appreciate great talent. And here's another look back at Reyes as he wins. Eight ball in the corner. He's smiling now. But I tell you, the shot ahead of that when he cut, was it the two ball gentleman in the side? Was that the one he yeah, made? Yeah, that was a good shot. What a magnificent shot that was. That truly was the one that won the tournament for him. The eight ball was the type of shot I could make, even with the world championship on the line. I'm not any good at it. I tell you, what a great job he did. Well, it was a magnificent tournament and a great championship match. And now to the victors go the spoils and some conversation. Uh, conversation. And Don Mackey, who's the commissioner of the uh, Pro Billiard uh, Tours, is going to handle the chores of uh, money and trophies and what have you. Don, let's turn it over to you. Thank you, Tom. On behalf of the Pro Billiards Tour and all the great players, the best players in the world, as commissioner of the tour, it's my great pleasure to thank the many people that helped make this possible. Two of those key people are here with me tonight. Uh, one is Russell Bash, who is the general manager of AMF. The other is Martin Gross, vice president of marketing for the Riviera. And of course, we have with us Jeff Carter. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate Jeff on behalf of the players and the Pro Billiards Tour for a magnificent tournament, Jeff. We really appreciate it. And without further ado, I'm going to allow Jeff, uh, I'm going to allow Russell to present you what you came here to get, which is the check. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. First of all, I'd like to make a couple thank yous. First, to the Riviera for their great hospitality. To the Lions Den for uh, helping us get the tables uh, here. For Tony Morris for getting them set up, looking great and playing well all week. And finally, to the uh, Pro Billiards Tour and Don Mackey for uh, giving uh, AMF the opportunity to sponsor this event. On behalf of AMF Playmaster, and it's a worldwide network of dealers, I'd like to congratulate you, Jeff on a fine tournament and present you with the second place check for $7,500. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the fans for coming out here and all the players because without the fans and players, we don't have tournaments. So I'd like to have yourself, give yourself a hand for that. <laughs> And also, I want to thank uh, the, the Riviera and also AMF for, uh, for getting together and putting on this tournament. This is a great tournament, and hopefully uh, it's a premier event on our tour, and hopefully it can be a perennial event, and I'm looking forward to coming back here next year. Thank you, Jeff. And now, um, Don, we have one more presentation. Efren, if you will, if we can get Mr. Reyes to come up here. Efren, if you will. Kind of a reluctant champion. What a magnificent performance he put on to win this 95 World Championship. Boy, uh, just a textbook type of play. Congratulations to you. Don, go ahead if you will play. Well, a year ago, we were right here at the Riviera playing the World Nine Ball Championship, and Efren had a tremendous battle against Earl Strickland, and he was at the quest, he was on his quest at that time to have his first Pro Billiards Tour title. He came in second place that night, unfortunately, but from that night forward, he's played the best pool in the world without a doubt. He went on to win the U.S. Open. He's won two major events on the Pro Tour this year. He's now won the World 8-Ball Championship. He is one of the greatest of all time, ladies and gentlemen, Efren Reyes. Yeah. My pleasure, Efren. And now for the check. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It gives me great pleasure to present you a check for $15,000. First place check uh, to, a, to a fellow AMF uh, 
uh, sponsor, AMF Puyat in the Philippines. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Marty Gross will present him with the cup that he's long sought, his first world championship on the Pro Tour. Marty? Thank you, Don. Efren, uh, this is my third year giving out the trophies here, and we're finally glad to give it to you. You've been working hard now, three years here. And at the Riviera, we're very happy to be again the home of billiards and Efren. Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> so the third, <laughs> the third time is the charm time. And as the crowd applauds Efren, of course, Jeff, uh, we'll remind you that we'll be back to talk to the two finalists and to find out how the champion feels about his victory here in 1995. But first, we'll pause for this message. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Efren. Well, we got quite a family group here, haven't we? I don't know if you'd buy a used car for many of us, but <laughs> we certainly look good here. Jim Madiah, Jim Remby over there, Efren Reyes, our champion, and Jeff Carter. It was a magnificent uh, final, and uh, you were very lavish in your praise of Reyes. You thought, and I did too, and everybody did, I guess. What a magnificent performance. Oh, yeah, he's a, without a doubt one of the greatest players ever to play this game. And Jeff Carter, he's coming on strong into his own now. He has nothing to feel bad about. He played a great tournament. He was undefeated coming in. I thought he was going to win it all, but tonight it was all the F and Reyes show. It was indeed tough to get out there and uh, to just, you know, show your skills. You're a very talented player, but this guy wouldn't give you a chance, would he? Well, I think he got lucky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Play it again, Sam. <laughs> well, he played excellent, and uh, he got shots, and when he got them, he took advantage of them, and uh, there was a couple mistakes that I made. Um, I, don't, I don't think you'd call them uh, characteristic, uncharacteristic mistakes, and um, he played real good, so I couldn't get untracked, and I played better uh, this tournament uh, on TV than I did the last time I was on TV, so that's the way I look at it. I, I moved forward. In, indeed, as Jim was saying, you had a magnificent week. One loss, 66 of the world's best players get together. You come up down to the finals, and uh, you just ran into a guy who was just way too hot. Right, Jim? Exactly right. I mean, when Efren got his speed control on the table, he was unbeatable. I mean, he was playing exact position. He knew where the cue ball was going, and it made all the easy shots for him. How about this being the, <coughs> the third time is the charm time for you, champion, huh? Yeah, yeah this is my third time. Mm -hmm. And you made the most of it. Oh, yeah, this time, is that, that's what I said. I got lucky this time. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias says that the Philippines are loaded with magnificent pool players. A, a lot of them, maybe 32 players are a good player. 32? 32. You mean we have to watch out for 32 players? Yeah. You're going to bring them all over here? I did not. <laughs> Any of them better than you, Efren? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think most of the, of the eight ball players in the world would agree. Not many of them better than you. Um, you, quite frankly, might have been a little lucky to get to the championship. You had a very tough semi-final match. You won 8-7. Um, when you got to the title, you were just magnificent. Did you have, did you feel lucky that you got here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is tough. Yeah, I got, I got lucky on this one, the last month. Yeah. Yes. When yeah. I had in Porto nothing, then I got lucky. I think I'm going I'm to win this. At one time, you were down 7-5, to five, weren't you, in the semifinals? Oh, I thought I lost already yeah. because he always shooting in the... Supposed to win, but he, yeah. he beat himself. Mattia, he said there are 32 more better than he is, or as good as he is over there in the... Are you coming out of retirement? Yes, I am going to be coming out of retirement. Probably next year. <laughs> i got to help my country. There's 32 more just like him. Hey, I think we better dig up Ralph Greenleaf and see if he can help us. <laughs> <laughs> Efren, our congratulations to you. You're a magnificent champion, and you played beautifully. And Jeff, our congratulations to you as well. What a great tournament, and we wish you future success. And now we join Don Mackey, the commissioner of the Professional Billiards Tour. Don, you're about to start your fifth year as the commissioner of the Pro Tour. How's the future of the Pro Tour look? Well, Gary, it looks very good. Uh, after four years of hard work with all the guys on the Pro Tour, uh, I can safely say that the Pro Tour is going to be here for a long time. We've had an opportunity over the last four years to establish our logo and our credibility with the billiard fans. And the situation now for us is very bright. We've basically now grown out of searching just for sponsorship from within the billiard industry. And now we seek sponsorship from Fortune 500 companies. We believe that we've developed a series of events that the players never had before. 
Uh, this series, for example, is a 15-week series, and we thank Prime Network for giving us the opportunity to deliver the product to the pro tour, to the fans of the Pro Tour. Um, what we have now is a, a World 8-Ball Championship, as you saw, the greatest players in the world. Next, we move on to the U.S. Open. From the U.S. Open, we go into the Pro Tour Championship, from the Pro Tour Championship to the World 9-Ball, and from the World 9-Ball, ultimately, to the Legends event. It's the first time in the history of the game that we've covered the game as a tour, event to event. And it gives the fans an idea of really what it's like for these guys out here on the Pro Tour to live week in, month in, month out, uh, playing professional pool. Uh, we're really excited by the fact that we're able to give an inside look at the game to our fans for 15 straight weeks and we're able to provide almost every shot of every game within each program. So in terms of our programming and our events, we've taken a tremendous step forward. We're providing our fans with what they asked us to do, which is give them the entire event beginning to end without serious editing and and whatnot. So our programming is, is where we want it to be. We'd like to be live in the near future. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will be able to establish that threshold in 96 or 97. Uh, but certainly the events that we're producing now for our fans, um, they like it, they're responding to it, and they're watching our shows. With that, that should bring more sponsorship. With that comes more money. With that comes happy players. And that's who I work for. We started out the Pro Tour from the philosophy that the Pro Billiards Tour is for the players. Uh, the game belongs to the players. I'm one of the few commissioners in professional sports today that has the, uh, the opportunity to represent the player side of the sports marketing equation. And I'm not going to say it makes my job easier, but I do think it makes it more enjoyable. Uh, as far as the overall progress of the tour, we just played a $50,000 added event. We have the U.S. Open is a $50,000 added. The Pro Tour Championship is a $50,000 added. Our World Nine Ball is $100,000 added. And the Legends is $50,000 added. Five years ago, those events didn't exist at that level. Only the U.S. Open was around. The other four didn't exist. So we've taken over production of our events, coordination of our events, promotion of our events, financing of our events. And slowly but surely, we're getting there. Uh, I've enjoyed the job over the past four years, and I look forward to serving the players for another two years. Well, one of the points that that brings up is that there's been a lot of controversy within the uh, billiard community. What do you think is causing it? Well, basically, I think it's ignorance. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, but in all honesty, it's a lack of information. Well, what exactly uh, is the controversy as you see it? Well, the Pro Tour is creating a lot of change. Uh, we had an industry, or a com if you will, the billiard community that's very diverse. You have to understand 50 million people play pool in the United States today. That creates a tremendous infrastructure in terms of the industry, billiard rooms, league operators, manufacturers, retailers, players. You have this huge group, this huge conglomerate. And for the last 30, 40 years, everything seemed to go along in a certain system, in a certain way. And finally, about five years ago, the players decided it was time for their situation that things had to change. Because they have changed so many things, it's naturally caused controversy. People, you know, the system tends to resist change at all times. But the fact is, is that if the billiard industry takes a serious look at what the Pro Tour is accomplishing and understands the opportunity that we're providing to them, uh, to stimulate the growth of the game, to provide a knowledge to the general public of their products and, and the services that they provide. There is no other vehicle within billiards today that's doing quite what the Pro Tour is doing. We're reaching out not just throughout the United States, but worldwide. Our programming goes out to over 100 countries by virtue of Prime International. The game truly is an international game. It's played in over 100 countries worldwide. And it's time that somebody reach out to that global market. We believe that by positioning our tour in or onto networks like Prime, we position the game to grow worldwide. The odd thing is, is that the billiard industry has a hard time in understanding what our goals and objectives are. Very simply, what we're looking to do is establish the sport on its own two feet. For years, the players and the events depended upon strictly the willingness of the billiard industry and the capability of the billiard industry to finance events such as this. 
We've reached beyond that now. We produce and finance our own events through our own sources. One of those sources is the ability to use the logo of the Pro Tour on products. So we generate revenues from the sale of products, billiard products. We use those revenues to do television production, to do event production, to give player benefits. Um, this is a game that's on the verge of doing what golf did between, say, 1960 and 1975. We're playing for the same money now that guys like Lee Trevino and Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus played for in the early 70s. We've been seeking for the past four years to tie in, to tie the professional game uh, directly into the grassroots of the industry and of the players. And of course, the players are in the billiard rooms and the billiard leagues around the United States. And the billiard industry has a tremendous infrastructure of dealers around the country. The, um, what we're coming to market with is a, a system called the Pro Tour Network of dealers, which will allow dealers to tie directly into our programming and to offer to the public an official line of Pro Tour products available only through those dealers. I predict by the year 2000 we'll be doing million dollar tournaments in professional pool. Tune in next week on Prime to see the best